John Higby gave me a huge one year's worth of subscriptions on Patreon and sponsors today's video. Oh, Attack versus partners Trin and Silvar, the Mimeoplasm, and Maelstrom Wanderer. Well, I'm not sure we can compete with a Maelstrom Wanderer, and certainly not with a lack of mana. We will have to try and get into some ramp here. Okay, I like the Warm Ring, Wayfarer's Bauble, Skyclave Relic. We asked for ramp and we got it. Also have token producers, so this is about as close to a perfect hand as you can ask for, really. The partner player cracking a Scalding Tarn and then going for a Vamp Tutor straight away. Alright, a Pearl Medallion for some more ramp, so probably just going for Wayfarer's Bauble and crack it next turn. The dream would be to go for the Skyclave Relic whilst our commander's in play. But I'm not sure we're going to be able to do it this game. A turn 1 Sol Ring for Maelstrom Wanderer. About the worst turn 1 play you could hope for from that commander. And then the Mimeoplasm discarding a Lonely Sandbar. A land from Silvar into a Talisman of Indulgence, down to four cards in hand by playing a Dragon Rage's Channeler. And we do not see another land, instead it is the Halo Fountain. So I'm not going to bother holding up interaction, we'll try and get the game moving faster. Crack the Wayfarer's Bauble now. It's a Resurgent Animist. Uh, is this the Landfall one that gets you mana? Yeah, I didn't know this one had been released on Magic Online now. So it's another Lotus Cobra basically with maybe some upside of some form of card advantage. Might be able to grab an elemental. Anyway, the Rampant Growth is going to get another land into play. Five cards in the team of player's hand. And shooter number two. Haven't even got to turn three yet. And it's looking like it's Maelstrom Wanderer turns, unfortunately. We see a capture. Uh, there's Gaia's Cradle. Another tutor in Mystical Tutor. Anyway, our opponent went for the Oracle of Moldaya. All those other cards were revealed from the Nyssa. So it must be that he has the Ancient Green Warden in hand, I would think, because that's an elemental. Anyway, the Skull Clamp comes down for the Mimeoplasm. And amazingly, this swinging in at us. When there's a Maelstrom Wanderer going off over there. But the first commander is Trin, Champion of Freedom. And they do get a human token. Land here would be nice. That way we can go into Skyclave Relic and Pearl Medallion, but no such luck. Could catch up on lands with Keeper of the Accord though. So do we just go for the Pearl Medallion here so that we can go Keeper of the Accord and, and try to keep hold of that Skyclave Relic to make tokens with? Can go for Secure the Wastes for one if we're made to discard our hand. Oracle of Muldaya into play for Maelstrom Wanderer. And showing us a Titania on top. Obviously going for a Lands Matter variant. And must have wanted to hold on to the lands as much as possible but decided to throw out a Vaseju. Well, the Mimeoplasm managing to make a land there, but just sticking at three and tapping out. Luckily, this triggers on each end step, so we do stand to be able to get lands out with each turn, assuming our opponents keep playing lands. E3-3 now deciding to offer up a trade with the uh, Nyssa over here. Maelstrom just decides to take the damage, though. Uh, there we see a Springleaf Drum. So, adding a mana of any colour by tapping down the tokens. Hasn't surveilled anything into the graveyard yet. And then out comes Silvar, Devourer of the Free. Okay, so our game plan is going to be pretty much the same, I think. Although there is a Mana Crypt. Can we save that? Could go for the Halo Fountain, I suppose. Yeah, let's play the Mana Crypt. Mimeoplasm holding up priority while he's tapped out might suggest that there's some free counter magic over there. Some free interaction of some kind. But it does enter, so try Keeper of the Accord. And then the Halo Fountain as well. Again, not revealing a land off the top, thankfully. Sylvan scrying on there to search for a land. If they did get the Ancient Green Warden previously, they can play lands from the bin, but haven't cracked any fetches yet. There is a Gush. Just hard casting that because they've only got one island in play. And they showed us a Polluted Delta there. We know what else they drew into. There's Finale of Devastation on top of the library now. So I'm going to generate a nice chunk of mana with the Polluted Delta. And that will give them the fetch they need for this as well. Shuffling had a burgeoning on top, but then the Nyssa triggered and I think showed us an Omnath. It's difficult to tell what our opponent's doing here. Um, then cast the Sylvan Scrying that he drew into this turn in order to tutor up Field of the Dead. So now Kodama's Reach is on top and does play Field of the Dead straight away. So he's going to consistently have more lands than us this game. Also has more creatures, so we get a soldier token as well for chump blocking. So if the Mimeoplasm ramps here with lands, then we'll be able to get another one into play. 
And there we go, there's Solemn Simulacrum, so by the end of the turn we'll get another one. Don't expect some land ramp from the uh, Mardu player, but never know, might play a Solemn of his own. But Keeper of the Accord doing some work for us here, keeping us in it on mana. It'll never ramp you, but it will catch you up. Arcane Signet is more ramp, but it's not land based. And there we see a Verge Rangers. And they were able to get down a Ganjo off the top, I assume. They've got two cards in hand, maybe that wasn't off the top. And the 4-2 continuing to go in at the Maelstrom Wanderer. That does have Menace, so they'd have to double block. But getting rid of Oracle of Muldaya would be useful. So with that damage dealt, they're at 4 Commander. We get another Soldier Token, which helps with drawing cards with Halo Fountain. Not sure with our opponents seeing this as a ticking time bomb, maybe. I'm not sure how well we'll be able to get off the win with this, but... It might get some artifact removal out of our opponent's hand instead of it going on the mana crypt, maybe. Okay, getting to a land. I mentioned it in the previous video, but I have put multiple pieces of land destruction in the form of lands in the deck, just in case our commander gets stuck as Temple of Civilization. It's one of the more tricky ones to flip back round. If someone does manage to wipe the board or keep us from swinging in, then we won't be able to flip this back around, so that's why these types of lands are in here. But I think it's time to get down our Oh Attack. Not worthy that Tech Edge can get rid of that Field of the Dead as well, which I would be tempted to go after. Could go for Thousand Moon Smithy as well, and that would give us a bunch of big tokens. I think that might be better than going for draw with the Halo Fountain, so we will do that. Have quite a few artifacts in play here. Mardu Player continuing to hold up priority, but decides to let it down, so we get 11 11s three times. And I'll show my opponents that I'm going after the Maelstrom Wanderer as well, although they may well be looking at us at this point. I think they should still concentrate on the Wanderer. That's one argument for not going for this, is to steer our opponents towards Maelstrom Wanderer still, instead of looking at us with these things. And actually, as it stands now, thanks to Secure the Wastes, we're actually not in the worst position to go after the Halo Fountain, are we? Especially if we could get one more trigger for creatures on the Keeper of the Accord. That would be really good, that means that we'd only have to put like one or two into X on this. We would want another planes for this though, is the only thing. Oh, awesome, a Bane of Progress on top of the library for Maelstrom Wanderer. So, could just get that for free here, if he decides to cast his commander. Instead going for the Ancient Green Warden. So, we'll probably shuffle it away with the Polluted Delta that he's got in the bin. Yeah, deciding to trigger Field of the Dead a bunch here. And we'll reveal with the Nyssa as well. So that is an elemental, he could put it into his hand. And yep, it is the Bane of Progress that he puts into hand. Could still cast it here. Has a breeding pool on top as well, although I dare say I want to go for Polluted Delta again. So cracking the Polluted Delta to shuffle. And again, a land is being put on top. So playing Polluted Delta again. And there we go, seeing our buddy, the Bane of Progress. So our artifact's about to get wiped out. So much for a Halo Fountain victory. Solemn Simulacrum triggers for the Mimeoplasm, takes out the Skull Clamp as well, didn't get a chance to put the Skull Clamp onto the Solemn, but you should never run this thing out unless you can make use of it straight away, and that's why. Now seeing the Kodama's Reach for even more landfall, so Field of the Dead just continuing to go off, the Bane of Progress, a 15-15 by the way, and now seeing the Titania that we saw previously, so definitely making use of this fetch land. And then some damage being dealt by the two elves going in down the middle. We got both triggers with the Keeper of the Accord at least. So we do get triple soldiers. The Mimeoplasm continuing to not do a whole lot of anything. Has six cards in hand, six mana available. Might have Evacuate or something. A Species Specialist will assume that our opponent's going for Human Tribal here. And does name Human ready for the inevitable board wipe. So sacrificing a token in order to put a plus counter on the commander and draw. It's a pet card of mine, I do like tribal cards, and the artwork on this is awesome as well. Cracking a second creature. This does mean that we're not going to have fewer creatures than our opponent. Managed to get into a land and cracks another creature. And shoving down a Talisman of Conviction as well. And this time does surveil something into the bin, that is a Weathered Wayfarer. Might be a bit too slow at this point in the game. Alright, so continuing to attack us with the Dragon's Rage Channeler. Not sure why he's worried about us exactly. I think I'd rather hold back the 3-3 as a blocker for one of these zombies personally. Obviously he can't swing in over here thanks to the Reacher, but like I said, I'd hold that back as a blocker myself. Trin makes a, another token at the end of the turn. Okay, and that is an Enlightened Tutor for us. Not sure what I'd go for with that. Maybe 
I don't know, maybe a skull clamp or something like that. Although we've got the card draw from the one ring. Uh, I think we have to go for some acceleration on the Skyclave Relic here, as tempting as the one ring is. Alright, so down comes the Skyclave Relic. We can put one into X on Secure the Wastes if we want, and make three soldier tokens. Because these tokens from the Relic will come into play tapped, unfortunately. So I am just going to hold back and not swing in at either of my opponents. We need to be focusing on the Maelstrom Wanderer player, although it's probably too late. Haven't blown up the Field of the Dead yet, because I'm trying to encourage my opponents to go for a board wipe. A land being cracked at the end of the turn, so putting a burgeoning on top, but that's about to go away, thanks to the Nyssa. Making more zombie tokens at the end of our turn. Uh, this time showing us an Avenger of Zendikar. Another land on top. Then drawing into that dual land and revealing a forest. So now we see the Maelstrom Wanderer going to give everything haste as well as cascade a couple of times. And there we see a gather specimens from the Maelstrom Wanderer. If a creature would enter under an opponent's control this turn, it enters under your control instead. So if Maelstrom Wanderer hits creatures, then that's going to be really good for Mimeoplasm. He'll definitely steal the commander. That does mean that he's going to be stealing our tokens as well, which is relevant. Ends up getting an extra turn. And then shows us a land and a crop rotation, so no additional creatures for the Mimeoplasm, unfortunately. No prizes for guessing which land he's going to go for with this, though. Likely a Gaia's Cradle. So a land dies, Titania triggers for a second time, making another 5-3. And surprisingly, didn't go for that. That is a Boro instead. So able to bounce this and return it with its own ability. The Elementals and the Zombies are going to appear under this opponent's control, though, so... Yeah, Gather Specimens is turning out to be a really good card for our opponent. Revealing this time with the Nyssa a flanking Harbinger. Might keep our opponent from doing any more Lands Matter shenanigans or playing any of these creatures that he's got in hand because obviously he's going to hand them over to Mimeoplasm. Makes the extra turn not quite as painful. Not worthy an Intuition is on top as well. And I will point out that I asked for casual fun in this game. I think three of us have noted that, but... Yeah, this guy's brought Lands Matter, Extra Turns, Maelstrom Wanderer, which I would consider high power as opposed to casual fun. But that's Magic Online for you. So, okay, all this coming in at us. We've got 20 powers worth of zombies and a 15-15. Can't make any tokens to block with because they'll come into play under this player's control instead. So I'll just make a bunch of chumps here. Lose most of our creatures and go down to 25. Our opponent has all of his creatures intact, apart from a couple of zombies he lost there. And Keeper of the Accord going to give us another land and another triple amount of tokens. Three tokens over here. Uh, yeah, because Ohatak created them alongside Keeper of the Accord, so the tripling of the tokens obviously counts even if it happens over there. So now this extra turn has started, and that means that Secure the Wastes is back online. Obviously we want to put more mana into it. A Seed Time is on top now. Well, there's Omnath Locus of Rage. Not one that we want to be seeing, especially with the Fetch available. Doesn't have a means of sacrificing the Elementals, at least. Plays a Dual Land, as opposed to the Polluted Delta. But Landfall triggering twice, thanks to the Ancient Green Warden, it's called. And this time with Nyssa, we see an Elvish Reclaimer. Landfall again. Not worthy that Eternal Witness is on top now. Also, playing the Avenger of Zendikar, really playing into a board wipe. So making, I think that's 12 plant tokens. Can't see any more hidden anywhere. And this time, deciding to go down the middle with a bunch of stuff. So that might mean that we can hold on to our Secure the Wastes here. Or maybe not, the 15-15 is swinging in towards us, unfortunately. So, we're going to have to go for 1 into X on Secure the Wastes. Gives us some Warrior Tokens. Bunch of blocks from Mimeoplasm. We just chump the one creature that's swinging in towards us, the 15-15. And now we're actually going to get our own tokens from Keeper of the Accord, as well as continue to keep up with mana. Keeper of the Accord keeping us in this one single-handedly. We are seeing a distinct lack of interaction, board wipes, stuff like that in this game, but like I said, I did ask for a casual fun game. So yeah, I don't think my opponents were really expecting to go up against Maelstrom Wanderer, Lands Matter Turns. Surprising that we haven't seen a single board wipe yet though. And Academy Ruins for the Maelstrom Wanderer player, or the Mimeoplasm player I should say. A Shriek more, I mean, you guess is as good as any where that's going to go. Probably Omnath. 
in case they end up with, okay, a 15-15 without any kind of evasion, any kind of trample. That's the last thing I would have gone for, personally. I'm more worried about the Omnath with all these elementals in play. This way, if someone goes for a board wipe, there'll be a lot of lightning bolts getting thrown around. And speaking of which, Bane of Progress is an elemental, so there will be a lightning bolt to deal here. Maybe going after a species specialist would be a good idea for our opponent. And yeah, that's exactly where he goes. I think that is the correct play from our opponent's perspective. It does count itself, so... Silvar sacrificing a token it must have been, so drawing a card on the way out. Looks like he's sacrificing pretty much his entire board apart from the commander here, so... Yeah, Species Specialist is going to draw a bunch. He's up to what will be eight cards in hand. Uh, this commander currently an 8-6. So what will that be? An 11-9. Skull Clamp is still probably the play next turn. Assuming someone doesn't combo off, the One Ring should have a survive another turn cycle. And we should have time to clamp some soldiers and warriors so that we can try and get into a board wipe or something else that we need. With the Halo Fountain going down, I'm not sure that we can steal a win out of nowhere. I was in two minds about playing that before we were ready to win, but thought we might be able to use some card draw with it. And it may well have worked if our opponent hadn't had the Bane of Progress. A Swords to Plowshare is excellent, going on to the Omnath. That's well played by the Mardu player. Uh, this is a Dying Trigger, so when it gets exiled it doesn't count. A Demonic Tutor may well be the board wipe that we're craving here. I don't have time to refill our hand with a Skull Clamp though, so that might change our opinion with the Enlightened Tutor. I didn't put Divine Visitation in the deck because I've done that in quite a few decks recently, but yeah, being able to tutor that out here wouldn't be the worst either. Um, yeah, that's the one that replaces tokens with 4-4 Angel tokens for 5 mana, and that might be worth including even if it is a bit overly used in my recent decks. Uh, Sylvar sacrificing the other commander suggests a board wipe. And there we see a dam. So now we need to decide, do we want this to be flipped round into a land or not? Could just replay it next turn. And then still go for the one ring. Yeah, we'll put it in the command zone this time. Although, do we want to go for the one ring? While we're not protected against a player. I don't suppose we need to hold off on one ring just so that we can make use of the protection. It's in here for the card draw, really. And the 12-12 swings in over here as well, now threatening commander damage does have indestructible from its own ability of course that's why it dodged the dam okay we get into another land so are we able to kill off that field of the dead before it goes off again or do we want to keep it in play to keep the maelstrom wanderer player a threat yeah i think i think we'll keep it in play for now because this way we'll be able to play and activate the one ring we need to get that going as soon as possible really we are playing it into blue mana. The Mimeoplasm deck doesn't seem to be a typical Mimeoplasm deck. It does seem to be running at least some control, so... Yeah, not confident that we would have got down the one ring there, but we managed to land it. So might as well activate it straight away. Put the first bird encounter on it and draw a card. Oh, and I keep doing that. <laughs> on Arena, you have to pay one into this for reasons that are infuriating to me. They change what the cards actually do on Arena and try to fix them which I think is ridiculous, but that's what they do. And you have to put one mana into the activation on the One Ring, and I keep getting it wrong because I use the One Ring on Arena way more than I use it on Magic Online. So I obviously should have held up the uh, planes there, ready for an Enlightened Shooter at the end of this player's turn, but don't suppose much harm will be done in going for it on our upkeep again. So probably just going for the Maelstrom Wanderer again here. Mm, yep, there it is. See how many extra turns he gets. <laughs> yep, there you go. And a tooth and nail as well. Awesome. Able to hold up the two mana to pay the entwine cost on that as well. As if he wasn't doing well enough. Um, yeah, oftentimes you're able to just set up two creatures into play. And then that's an immediate combo for you. Doesn't look like that's what our opponent's doing. A Shire is landfall on creatures. Uh, Pathbreaker Ibex. We'll buff all the stuff as well when it swings in. And because the creatures are lands, they enter as lands and trigger landfall, like I said. So Field of the Dead going to make zombies, which will also be buffed by this thing. And all the creatures are going to have haste, thanks to the Maelstrom Wanderer. So the greatest power amongst creatures he controls is currently a 15-15, so probably one-shot someone here. 
Alright, so just swinging in with these three creatures, not sure if it's enough to deal with both players. The Mimeoplasm is designed to do something here. Might be too late because the Pathbreaker Ibex is already on the stack. Alright, an Echoing Truth bouncing at all of the zombie tokens. I'm not sure we'll really do anything for him because he was holding them back anyway. Might open him up to an attack from us though. So now we've got a 30-30 and an 18-18 going in at the Mardu player who very nearly dealt with him. And a 22-22 is going to be commander damage on the Mimeoplasm. So he could have used this to bounce the Maelstrom Wanderer and have himself survive there. So both of these players going down. And our opponent has an extra turn yet, so thankfully we've still got protection on this. It's until our next turn. In white, I suppose the ability to flicker this would be useful, wouldn't it? But it's not a one ring deck, it's a casual tokens build. Eternal Witness, do you just go for an extra turn here? Nope, he instead went for the Green Warden. So down comes Green Warden for more landfall shenanigans. So now, even if we manage to deal with the Ashire, we'd still have plus seven plus seven on all the stuff, thanks to Maelstrom Wanderer being in play, so... Yeah, maybe going after this would be the thing to do, but then we don't have any cards in hand. Maybe uh, it's difficult. We could go for activating the One Ring during our upkeep and then deciding if we need to tutor for something during our upkeep afterwards. See what we draw into first. Does mean adding a bird encounter, but I don't think it really matters at this point. So we'll draw first. And again, I've tapped mana into the... <laughs> and again, I've tapped mana into this. Uh, okay, there's a generous gift we can at least use here, so might as well make use of the mana. Go after the Ibex, I think. And then maybe we just have to tutor up God Pharaoh's gift. I think that's our best bet at this point. We're not really meant to be competing with something like this. Just missed out on a turn with the Skull Clamp, thanks to the dam from our opponent, who did have to cast it, in all fairness. So yeah, Dark Steel Mutation dealing with the Maelstrom Wanderer might be okay, but they're still going wide on us. So let's have some fun on the way out. We can go for the God Pharaoh's Gift. It's going to be too slow still, but we'll just do it for the fun of it, like I said. Now this triggers at the beginning of combat, I think. Um, at the beginning of combat on your turn, exile a creature from the graveyard. Create a token copy of it. So we'll obviously get three of those. Only got one creature in the bin, unfortunately, but it is a means of us getting lots and lots of tokens during the next turn cycle. Just need to hope our opponent doesn't get us next turn. Argument to be made for the SRAM's expertise, maybe, so that we can buy ourselves another turn, but eh, whatever, we're not winning this one. Let's stop pretending that we are. One mana shy of the expertise, I'm glad I didn't waste that tectonic edge mana trying to activate this previously. Um, yeah, go through to combat, and it's a May ability, we will choose Keeper of the Accord, and get some zombie versions of this. Won't see the triggers on these until the end of our opponent's next turn, unfortunately, and going to have to lose some of them to attacks, I think. Our opponent has six cards in hand and a means of haste as well, so should be able to go wide on us. Still has the fetches that he can play with the Green Warden from the bin as well. So yeah, playing a Bloodstained Mire and cracking that makes two more zombies. So now just going straight through to the attacks and turning in sideways completely probably has us will try to survive. Okay, but he has the rift anyway, because of course he does, so there was never anything we were going to do there. We will take the damage and call it a game. Yeah, I've tried my damnedest to get a decent game in with Oh Attack. It's a really fun one. I really, really like this commander, but in today's age of commander, when wizards have made the format as incredibly fast as it is, and given us a bunch of commanders that get free spells and all that kind of thing, just really massively valued commanders, then yeah, we're not going to compete in the modern state of commander, I don't think, especially not on Magic Online. If you're at the kitchen table and you have a more casual group of friends to play with, then this will be a really fun one, but I'm just not going to be able to get it to do anything on Magic Online, unfortunately, so hopefully you all enjoyed it. Probably won't be trying this again, unfortunately. Like I said, I do really like this one, but... It's just too much time and effort for minimal return, unfortunately, so hopefully you all got something out of the video anyway. Massive thank you to the patrons for their support of the channel. I'm Tribal Kai. Thank you for watching.